Three more states have joined the march to roll back mask mandates today as COVID cases continue to fall. But many of these changes ultimately leave the decision up to local leaders, causing a lot of confusion. ABC's Whit Johnson joins us now with the latest. Tonight, with Omicron in retreat, a growing number of states moving to drop mask mandates, at least partially. New York ending its mask or vaccination requirement for businesses starting tomorrow. The governor pointing to a 93% drop in COVID cases. This is what we've been waiting for. Tremendous progress after two long years. And we're not done. Decisions will be left up to local officials. In New York City, which has often been the epicenters of these waves of the virus, there will still be a mask mandate on mass transit, and proof of vaccination will be required at restaurants, theaters, and arenas. I think it's a smart idea to keep it going a little bit longer in the city because we have more people. And the governor stopping short of lifting masks in schools until at least early March. Today, Rhode Island and Illinois dropping mandates like New York. At least nine states now rolling back restrictions within weeks. I think all of us are getting tired of wearing masks, that's for sure. It's with a big feeling of relief to get back to normal. I think a lot of the other business owners are just going to be so excited. Massachusetts joining Connecticut and dropping school mask requirements on February 28th. It's time to give our kids a sense of normalcy and lift the mask mandate. With new cases in the U.S. plunging nearly 70 percent in the last three weeks, there is growing pressure on public officials to drop the mandates. But the entire country is still seeing high levels of transmission, and the White House isn't backing down on the federal recommendation that most Americans should mask up in indoor public settings and schools. When you are in a high transmission area, which is everywhere in the country, you should wear a mask in indoor settings, including schools. As states move on their own, the CDC director today pressed repeatedly for specific guidance on how to ease restrictions. And we are working on that guidance. We are working on, you know, following the trends for the moment. Um, what I will say, though, is, you know, our hospitalizations are still high. Our death rates are still high. So as we work towards that and as we um, are encouraged by the current trends, we are not there yet. And tonight, Dr. Anthony Fauci telling the Financial Times the U.S. is heading out of, quote, the full-blown pandemic phase of COVID-19, adding these decisions will increasingly be made on a local level rather than centrally decided or mandated. There will also be more people making their own decisions on how they want to deal with the virus. Fauci says there is no way we are going to eradicate this virus, but I hope we are looking at a time when we have enough people vaccinated and enough people with protection from previous infection that the COVID restrictions will soon be a thing of the past. Is so many anxious at this point to return to some semblance of normalcy. Whit Johnson joins us now. And Whit, Dr. Fauci also talked about whether all Americans would need boosters in the future. What did you have to say about that? Lindsay, Dr. Fauci says he doesn't think regular vaccine booster shots will be needed for everyone. For example, if you're a normal 30 year old with no underlying health conditions, you might only need a booster shot once every four to five years. But it would depend on who you are and things like health and risk factors would have to be taken into account. Lindsay. All right. Whit Johnson for us. Thanks so much. For more on the politics of the pandemic, let's bring in ABC News political director, Mr. Rick Klein. Rick, thanks so much for joining us. And we've certainly seen several mayors and governors in blue states in recent days announce plans to roll back mask mandates and other pandemic restrictions. And so many Americans are eager to move past this pandemic. But the CDC and the White House have not moved on any national guidance on dropping those restrictions. What's driving the disconnect here? It's really striking, Lindsay, because so many of these blue state mayors and governors have been uh, at the leading edge of very strict, uh, stringent restrictions and, and very much in lockstep with the White House. They have broken, and there's been a stampede of governors and mayors just in the last couple of days who have said enough with the mask mandates, enough with wearing masks in schools, enough with the restrictions of the COVID era. It's time that we learn to live with it. And I think it reflects a growing public sentiment that, that people are just over COVID. And here's the thing, whatever a political leader says, it only works in, in so much as people are willing to listen to it. And these governors, many of whom are a lot closer to their constituents than leaders in Washington, D.C., see what people are thinking and saying, and they feel it from people that are quite upset with the fact that there are still restrictions. They want to see life back to normal, whatever the consequences. What's the danger politically for the White House if they look like they're behind on this guidance? 
Yet you don't want to be the last one to recognize the reality as people live their lives. Uh, frankly, Lindsay, for much of the country, COVID has been effectively over in terms of people's behaviors for a long time, a year plus. And in terms of schools, there's been all sorts of differences between how people are, are actually implementing guidelines and whether they're listening to it. It has been a raging debate around the country. What we're seeing now from, I think, some of these Democratic governors and mayors is that that, that debate is ending. And whether the White House recognizes that now, a month from now, now, six months from now, or right up to the midterm elections, there are consequences to making it look like you are out of touch and to having the word of scientists, the CDC, people at the White House podium, having having their their guidance ignored altogether. But at the same time, could mixed messaging at the local and federal levels hurt the efforts against the pandemic if it causes confusion and debate about what people should actually be doing in public places? That's definitely the concern, Lindsay. And of course, we've been here before. We've been at moments where it felt like we were about to, to end this pandemic, and then there's another surge and another uptick in hospitalizations and deaths, and we're back to the same sort of restrictions. And it's not clear whether you can keep going back to that and tell people again, okay, never mind the fact that we just said no more mandates, we're putting them back into place. The subject of children and, and schools, I think, is particularly fraught because so much of the science suggests that children are, are unlikely to, to, to need the sort of protections that masks would bring, even know at the margins, as the CDC will continue to say, it's better than not to wear a mask. So leaving it up to individual choice when those individuals are children whose learning is impacted by these restrictions uh, makes it just another level of difficult. But there's no question that uh, the, the concern among public health professionals is that letting up our guard at this moment means that we could be prolonging this into another cycle. And this, of course, is a midterm election year. And we saw the chair of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney of New York, tweet today, Democrats plan to fight COVID is working. Cases are down and vaccines are widely available. Now it's time to give people their lives back. With science as our guide, we're ready to start getting back to normal. So do Democrats really need to take this position in order to stay on the same page with voters who are just fatigued by this pandemic? I don't think you can run as a party nationally in 2022 on COVID restrictions. There was a poll out last week from Monmouth University. Seven in 10 Americans and just about half of Democrats say it's time to recognize that COVID is going to be with us and we need to cope with the consequences. That is where the public is right now. That's where you're seeing these governors begin to move. And I think Democrats who, who stand in the way of that face political peril. We saw it in Virginia last year in the governor's race. You could see it in other races throughout this year. If you're standing up against people getting their lives back, that is an untenable political position. Rick Klein, our thanks to you as always. Thanks, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.